Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Common Mode Rejection Ratio. In this presentation, we'll explain what Common Mode Rejection Ratio, or CMRR, is, and in particular, why Common Mode Rejection Ratio is an important figure of merit for differential voltage probes. We'll only briefly talk about differential voltage probes in this presentation, so please see the separate presentation, Understanding Differential Probes, if you'd like more in-depth information about differential probes and how they're used with oscilloscopes. Let's start by explaining how a differential amplifier works. A differential amplifier has two voltage inputs and produces a voltage output that's the difference between the two input voltages. Neither of these two inputs needs to be connected to ground, and in most cases, they are not. The output voltage, V out, is the difference between the input voltages multiplied by the amplifier's so-called differential gain. Differential amplifiers are used in two main application areas. One is for extracting information from a differentially coded signal, for example, USB, CAN, etc. Another important application area for differential amplifiers is more generically measuring the difference between two voltages when neither point is connected to ground. And this is the application we'll be focusing on in this presentation. The opposite of a differential mode signal is a common mode signal, which is a signal that's present and identical on both inputs. That is, the signal is common to both inputs. A good example of a common mode signal is external noise that's coupled equally onto both inputs. The output of a differential amplifier would then be the sum of both the differential voltage and the common mode voltage, with a differential amount of gain, A, for each type or mode of voltage. An ideal differential amplifier would not amplify the common mode signal. That is, the common mode gain would be zero. We can describe the ability of a differential amplifier to reject common mode signals using something called the common mode rejection ratio. Mathematically, this is the ratio of the amplifier's differential mode gain to the amplifier's common mode gain. And because this is a ratio, it's most often expressed in units of decibels, or dB. Since a differential amplifier should have much greater differential mode gain than common mode gain, CMRR should always be positive, although you may sometimes see CMRR reported as a negative value in specifications, data sheets, etc. Common road rejection ratio is largely a function of the amplifier's design, such as the characteristics of the op amps, resistors, etc. And in particular, different capacitances on each input also impact common mode rejection ratio, especially at higher frequencies. In an ideal differential amplifier, common mode signals would be completely rejected. That is, the common mode gain would be zero, and thus common mode rejection ratio would be infinite. This doesn't occur in the real world, but generally speaking, larger CMRR values indicate greater rejection of common mode signals, and thus are desirable. Common mode rejection ratio can be reported as spot values at given frequencies, or in the form of a graph, usually on a log scale. The graph shown here is typical for CMRR values in that the common mode rejection ratio decreases as frequency increases. This is due to several factors, such as imperfections of the amplifier and unequal capacitances at the amplifier inputs. Common mode rejection ratio values are very important when it comes to choosing differential voltage probes. Oscilloscope probes normally measure voltage with respect to ground. This is called a single-ended measurement. But there are many cases where we want to make a differential measurement, where we measure voltage between two points, neither of which is connected to ground. One way of doing this is by using two single-ended probes, each independently connected to ground. We measure simultaneously at two points, and then subtract these voltages within the scope. This is often referred to as a quasi-differential measurement. A better approach is using a differential probe which has an internal differential amplifier, which produces a voltage that corresponds to the difference between the voltages at the two connection points. There are many reasons why differential probes are superior to the quasi-differential approach, 
And one of these reasons is that a proper differential probe has a much better common mode rejection ratio than can be achieved in the quasi-differential approach. Better CMRR means more accurate measurements, as well as less noise in the measurements. And this is particularly important when signal levels are low or common mode noise levels are high. Let's end with a brief summary. A differential amplifier is a device that amplifies the difference between two input signals. Common mode signals are signals that appear identically on both inputs. These are most often noise or some type of offset or bias. These common mode signals should be rejected by a differential amplifier. As the name implies, common mode rejection ratio is the ratio of the differential mode gain to the common mode gain, and thus is an important metric for a differential amplifier. Ideally, the common mode gain would be zero, making CMRR infinite. But in practice, a higher common mode rejection ratio is usually desirable. Note that common mode rejection ratio also varies by frequency, usually decreasing at higher frequencies. With regards to differential oscilloscope probes, CMRR is an important figure of merit because it affects how accurately a differential voltage can be measured. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Common Mode Rejection Ratio. If you'd like to learn more about differential probes, oscilloscopes, or other related topics, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.